Today, we're exploring galleries in the East Village and the Lower East Side, starting with Eva Pressenhuber Gallery. We're going to see an exhibit of works by two Swiss artists, Luisa Giardi and Yves Scherer. There's a lot to unpack in both of these artists' works, so I will start with Luisa, whose works are these paintings on the wall. And her paintings are all about portraiture and how technology has influenced this concept. For example, nowadays portraiture can be seen as a casual form, a selfie on Instagram, which is a far cry from the portraits of the saints created during the Renaissance. However, Louisa wanted viewers to be more engaged with the works than the stuffy portraits of the past. So she created these individuals in her paintings to be generic figures that we could all imagine as ourselves. In fact, quote, there are portraits of no one specifically and therefore are allowed to be of anyone the viewer imagines. Like avatars in the metaverse, they are empty vessels on which viewers place their own antidotes personal chronicles, dreams, and hang-ups. This is one of Eve's works. He's responsible for the sculptures and these photographic images that are all meant for us to question reality. In these photographs, he's captured images of celebrities and models that, in their recognizable form, seem extraordinary. But when you shift your perspective, you're reminded that they're really people and were once children like us all. He says, quote, even when the subjects are recognizable, society has already reduced them to stereotypes. This cat on the right is another sculpture by Eve, and I think it's crazy because it looks, this material just looks so fluffy and lightweight, but it's actually this mix of polychrome aluminum and stainless steel and all for digital printings. Our next stop is over at the Whole Gallery to see an exhibit by the Russian artist Gosha Lavushkin. And first of all, I mean, it's you can't ignore <laughs> this rich color palette. This, in combination with the graphic shapes, remind me so much of a Peter Halley work, if Halley were into early video gaming of the 90s. <laughs> The artist's works are influenced by his time working in an animation studio and he's actually included this audiovisual animation to really complement and bring the works to life. 
And honestly, once you see this, you can really identify even clearer elements of movement in his paintings, especially like the water moving through pipes. This is actually his first exhibit with the hole, and if you're curious about the materials he's using, this is acrylic on canvas. We're now heading over to the neighboring East Village Gallery, Karma, to see an exhibit of works by Maya Rusnik titled Consulting with Shadows. And right off the bat, you can see there's a, definitely a darkness to her works, so it is no surprise that she created them while struggling with postpartum depression after the birth of her daughter. And the analogy of the shadow is a reference to, quote, profoundness of shadows and the beauty and clarity that can emerge from literal and psychological darkness. These works are oil on linen, they were all painted in 2021, and this is her first exhibit at Karma, so that's a first today. This will be our final gallery in the East Village before heading down to the Lower East Side. And this is Rachel Uffner Gallery. We're gonna see this exhibit, which is the downstairs gallery space, and then one upstairs. And this is an exhibit by Hannah Yilma Golding. And it actually spans both this gallery and Friedman Gallery. And Hannah is an Ethiopian artist and her works portray female protagonists in domestic and public spaces. And she also draws on scenes from her everyday hometown of Addis Ababa. And Hannah is creating this ideal state in her works where women are, quote, safe from violence and free to express themselves independently of social restrictions. Upstairs is an exhibit by Erica Mao and Robert Zender, and the paintings by Erica Mao are my personal absolute favorite. These are the really large, colorful ones on the wall. I just, I love how she's translated the traditional landscape painting into this futuristic, almost utopian form.
Now we're down in the Lower East Side to check out Lyles and King to see an exhibit by Chris Hood titled Novel Gazers. And right away you can see he uses this really special staining and layering technique that almost reminds me of a watercolor painting, except for that it's not. It's actually a descendant of oil paint on canvas. And then as you look at his works closely, scattered throughout his paintings are these familiar objects of everyday life, or as Chris describes them, quote, artifacts of looking. And they're retrieved from sources like internet gifts and stickers and vintage patches and advertisements. But these collages are not random. The chaos in these works represent a larger conflict, which is how can we possibly process all of the information that is thrown at us on a daily basis. This is a separate exhibition, but I wanted to show you that Lyles and King expanded into this really beautiful second project space. I just, I'm glad they were able to, you know, knock down some walls and just <laughs> move over next door. It's a really nice extension of the gallery space and my first time seeing it. Chinatown is all decorated for the Lunar New Year. It is so beautiful. So we're now heading to Foxy Production. This is going to be our last show of the day. And this is an exhibit by Petra Courtright. And at first glance, these look like just beautiful floral paintings, but honestly, they're, they're so much more. Kind of similar to Chris Hood that we just saw Petra is influenced by the influx of images around her, and she uses these images from real life and the internet as a part of her works. And the cool thing, well, there's a few cool things about these works, but what I really love is that these works are a mix of painting and photography. So, quote, some elements, flowers, leaves, and branches are photographed in the artist's garden. Others, including Marks, lines, and brush strokes are painted in Photoshop or appropriated from the internet. So the crazy thing is that in reality, these aren't actual traditional paintings at all. They are digital prints on Belgian canvas. So I would love to know what you all think. Can we still call these paintings or no? <laughs> Very curious to see what you all have to say, but they are beautiful regardless. So this is where I leave you. I hope you enjoyed exploring the East Village and the Lower East Side with me. For my next few videos, we will be leaving New York and exploring another city as well as another country. So if you have not subscribed, please subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a video. I promise you are going to love what is coming next and I will see you all then.